y'all new gays wear me out. I'm an old sissy. Yeah, I okay. preach now. And, preach. And I know all this pan-gender, <laughs> cross-gender, cis-gender, non-binary. When I was growing up, you was a boy or a girl, and you picked one. Yeah. Regardless of what was between your legs, you picked one. So what you said you were living in? So pan, so pan gender. So I think the young people, they, so it was the youngster that, that introduced me to that Hold term. On, Cause you wearing me out already. Uh, I <laughs> the house. I was in the house. I was in the house. Oh, my pleasure. And snack. <laughs> I love snack. <laughs> Thank you. Who made this? Jeff Shaw. Wow. wow, thank you. You're welcome. Why well, you didn't say I can have one? Uh, <laughs> there's, only, there's only four. <laughs> I'm taking this. <laughs> Great to be in the house. Yes. Don't hurt him. Oh, Don't hurt him. Oh. <laughs> no, you I did. Love it. I love it. Did we come in? Did we come in? Come the on, house? now. We're back. Oh, we I'm are trying. back. Come in here. Come in Oh, without you, there's no us. Oh, oh my goodness. Welcome to the house. To the house. To the house. To the house. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. This oh, is, my and snacks. <laughs> I love snacks. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you. Who made this? Jeff Shaw. Ah. Wow, thank you. You're welcome. Why, you didn't say I can have one. Uh, <laughs> there's, only, there's only four. <laughs> I'm taking this. <laughs> Great to be in the house. Yeah, well, we love what down. you've done with the place. Yeah. Oh, thank right. you for this. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you, Owen. Oh. So, man, welcome back, guys. How's everybody been? Yeah, great. Great. Yeah. Good to be back. I gotta <laughs> say, I have really, really missed you all. It's yeah. missed you too. So I'm happy to be back. What's cooking, Sean? Baked apple brie. This delicious apple treat is sure to be a hit of any occasion. Hitting both sweet and savory taste buds, baked cinnamon apples and melted brie are a perfect autumn appetizer. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Is that free cheese? Free cheese. Wow. Let me ask you, being, uh, since y'all all celebrities now, since ah. y'all all famous, <laughs> like, uh, being in the public eye, do you find what you say has more weight to it now, has more bearing to it? You kind of got to watch what you say? Yeah. Well, I know Cheryl never watches what she says. <laughs> <laughs> true, true story. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you must be like that. You know what's interesting? I, I prefer not to have to watch what I think. Um, one of the things I love about what we do is it's not curated. Yeah. Wow. But then we do have to think about when people are hearing what we say, particularly out of context, yeah. that it could have an impact that's unintended. So yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's a fine line we have to really walk, I think. Well, how do you avoid that? What do you do to kind of get those people to understand what you meant to say? Now, you know who's going to be great to talk about this today? My guest that I invited, Q Latham. You may know him as Funky Deneva. Quick-witted comedic personality Quentin Latham has carved out a name for himself as an outspoken multimedia personality. Girl, let me tell y'all what happened. This Florida native, best known as Funky Deneva, has an unfiltered approach to breaking down the news and giving his sharp, savvy spin on current events. We don't want to see no damn middle-aged women bopping and flopping. Starting out as a vlogger in 2010 with My Hair Is Laid Like... Lay, auntie. My hair is laid like the weird, honey. Funky Deneva's popularity quickly grew, and soon he was giving candid and hilarious recaps. Let's just start with some of these fairy tales, fantasies, and falsehoods. Funky Deneva has been referred to as a problematic vlogger 
for various controversies over the years. I don't give a good goddamn what your Jim Brown football player linebacker back ass got to say. Currently going by the name Q, Quentin is one third of Foxhole's hit TV show, TGIF, alongside co hosts Claudia Jordan and Al Reynolds. Q gets to share his humorous take on pop culture, hot topics, and society while still remaining true to who he really is. So, what do you think when you talk about weight and your words? We were just, give me your feedback on that. I gotta eat, y'all know that. <laughs> well, you know, I think that our, our words carry a lot of weight. I think now that we have had this experience and been able to present in this platform, once you are in the public's eye in some way, that what you say carries a little bit more power when you're more visible. How sure. about you? Yeah, I, I mean, I think we have a different platform, of course, so it does uh, make our words more meaningful to more people. I try to be intentional in what I say anyway. What I'm hoping we don't do is start to feed into this idea that we have to edit ourselves in a certain way, because I think one of the things yeah. that is exciting about what we do is the authenticity of it. Yeah. And, you know, I'm curious on Aaron's opinion, particularly since he has a social media presence. Yeah, I, I, don't, have, I don't have a problem with what I say. Uh -huh. It's what I post. Mm. And people will add me. They'll meet me, like, on Clubhouse, and then they, they follow me because, you know, they're, you're on a show, and, and then they see my life. And they see me with the wig and the, and the makeup mm -hmm. and falling out of my chair and acting a complete fool. <laughs> and then they unfollow me. But you, but <laughs> what the hell it, did but you follow it, me for? But, what did you want? <laughs> but isn't your posting still speaking to people? My Instagram is, is my artistic expression. It's been that way for years. This is why I don't have a big following. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to reach. I'm trying to express. I like it when you say intentional. You've always been intentional. Yeah. But it is a responsibility that comes when you sit and in front of the world. I think the responsibility is to be authentic and be who we are because... Now, what else can we do? I love that you said that. So, what are you looking forward to? I want us to model, because we had conflict last season. Uh, I want us to, to model how to get along. Because a lot of people butt heads like we did. And they don't ever get to come together. I think the fact that we're holding space for people. Uh, therapy mm -hmm. is certainly a path. Okay. And, you know, I'm a big advocate of that, of course. But therapy is not the only path. Um, having a support system, um, having people who hold space for you and your truth, and that can come from a lot of different places, right? And so I think that's what we do. Um, and that's what I'm very proud of. Yeah, I'm very proud of what we do here. We have our guests come. Yes, yeah, some of them do talk about hardship, but what they also talk about oftentimes is their journey. I'm committed to showing up every week authentically. Okay. Yeah. Good for you. And I think that it's the idea of being sort of who we are and expressing that and kind of welcoming our different guests into our home and allowing them to have that voice. You know, you spoke of some of that conflict between you and I, and it's the idea of inclusion and acceptance. Mm -hmm. And the idea is Preach, it doesn't always have to be the way you see it mm -hmm. to Good be point. right. Good point. And that because it's not something familiar doesn't make it wrong. That's true. It's just mm -hmm. unfamiliar. There you go. And so, so then I think that that's where uh, this opportunity for people to see, because part of the struggle in the Black experience in the LGBTQIA plus community is that it's unfamiliar. And yeah. people don't understand yeah. that the struggle is not just about your sexual preferences and interests in that way, mm -hmm. but it's also about your ethnicity and your color and how people perceive you on another level. So that then, person. and that the combination of those mm -hmm. um, is a different struggle. And that in that different struggle, a different voice needs to present mm -hmm. and represent. Mm -hmm. And so I love that we're giving people the opportunity to share that voice and experience because for all of the young people of color mm -hmm. who are a part of the community coming up, I love that there is an opportunity for them to hear what other people went through um, to actually then find a place of peace, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. You know, for us to all be able to sit here knowing when we were coming up and searching for our sexuality and trying to figure it out, there was no one there. It was just bad, bad, bad. Mm -hmm. And now we sit here in our, in our presence and acceptance. That's the key. Well, and Shola, I, I, I have to interject because I know that a lot of times you talk about the trauma, but not everybody had bad, bad, bad. True. There were some people That's who true. had 
it's okay. I love you no matter what. I wish. And um, wow. exactly. That so you, nice. that was your wish, but somebody may have had that. I know. So, and that's I think what I'm that as we speak to a more global audience, mm -hmm. it's that idea that one thought process is not always about the tragedy and what has gone wrong in someone's life, True. but there's someone who is actually being nurtured and loved on, you know, in Just their the experience. Way they are. So why don't we hold that thought here <laughs> till we get back? <laughs> <laughs> So, Air, before we went out to break, you said you don't say anything that you might need to be concerned about. What do you think about that? I, I just don't, I don't, I, I do things, I post embarrassing mm -hmm. uh, videos. I don't have a problem of saying something offensive. That's just not, you know, what... I, I don't well, like to call it. Well, sure, I just want to say this. Okay. I know that <laughs> our guest that's coming. Now, Q, whatever he posts, that mouth <laughs> will always get him into trouble. I wait to me, funky Dineva baby. Ah, but here it is. <laughs> oh, wow. look. Oh, hey. there you go. There you go. You Come ain't got the COVID issue. You know what? Not, <laughs> not no more. These hoes that you okay. to introduce me to, they ain't got the COVID issue. We it's safe it. in this house. You ain't got the COVID issue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. Come on in. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome look. to the house. <laughs> uh, uh, she uh, vaccinated. Uh, <laughs> Freak, <laughs> what a freak, day, baby. Look, look, only on we Wednesday. Happy to have you. <laughs> I am so feed happy to be you, here. Feed you okay. first. Oh, Funky says, I'm scared right, of her. Right, well, we were just talking about mouths getting them into trouble, and Hold you on, sure don't, came don't, in. Don't, don't talk about me and my mouth, and I'm talking about y'all and y'all's. Oh. oh. <laughs> Baby, I saw y'all last episode. <laughs> 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 Bitch, the tension was thick. Oh, you ain't going to bring it up now. Oh, oh this the hell I am oh, going to bring it up. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. What all the hell was all that about, honey? You know, well, you're here now. It's all about you. Listen. Uh, Thank you all for having me. Honored. So good to have you. Where am I playing at? <laughs> so what y'all hoes was talking about? <laughs> you. What y'all said? I hope it was all good things. Oh, no. Look at this. No. Right. Oh, oh, never would have made it. <laughs> yes. Oh, this look good. All oh, right. baby, y'all some fancy niggas. Y'all got char grilled peaches. <laughs> Wait. What's this? That's the chef, Char. Char, what's this? Yes. So, what we got this here is a peach or an apple? Cause you a, don't. That's an apple. Ooh, you put it on the grill? Yeah. Yes. What does mean? <laughs> this is a rich I see the apple grill. <laughs> Well, see, apples have natural sugar in it, so when you put it on the grill, it caramelizes and gives you a nice What's sweet chart. <laughs> delicious. <Burns>. It's delicious. <laughs> That's Burns. right. Ooh, honey. Well, I ain't never had no apple on no grill. <laughs> apple cider glazed pork chops. Tender, juicy, sweet, and sticky is all you need for these pork chops. The apple cider glaze is perfect pairing for pork and also gives you a sweet and tangy flavor. Thank, Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Looks delicious. Yeah, Sean shows out. I'm yes, y'all know how to y'all know how to treat people when they come. Mm -hmm. Have them grill apple. Yes, <laughs> honey. You know, I, I be going around some people's place. They be trying to offer you chips and <laughs> guacamole. And <laughs> Girl, I could have bought guacamole with my own money. <laughs> Give me some new. <laughs> Girl, I got some See. grill apple. <laughs> I ain't never seen one in my life. It looks so pretty. You know what? Which I one? guess we do not have to even talk about how someone's mouth <laughs> gets them into trouble. Is this your norm? Is this how you introduce yourself to the world all the time? I um like to think that I am just unapologetically me. Okay. And when you say that, because we also know you as Funky Deneva. Mm -hmm. Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> and I you love nasty? that name. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, of course. But then you also go as Q. Mm -hmm. Are okay. they different people? Yes and no. So, um, obviously, Funky Deneva is my persona, my stage name, the, 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 my, my claim to fame. But if you were to meet any of my like good friends from college, or people who have known me from my childhood, they would easily say to you, Funky Dineva is nothing more than Q with a wig on. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I will say, the Funky Dineva character, especially coming from a corporate background, coming from a, 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 an astute black family background, or whatever the case may be, she granted me a level of liberty mm -hmm. 
that mm. Quentin Latham, a.k.a. Q, did not organically have, but had to evolve to. Mm. So what? It, so how do you feel when you put a wig on? What, is it, it. what does it give you? Fishy. <laughs> <laughs> so are you... Are Empowered. You, do you... Uh, and do you identify as... Uh, I identify as pan-gender. I, I think that I have a, a female side and a male side. I express, That's what that mean? Yeah. Okay. Uh, That's what I had to ask. Yeah, and, and it's different, a little bit different in my mind from non-binary, uh, which to me says I'm not male or female See, y'all or knew, something y'all, else. Y'all new gays wear me out. I'm an old sissy. Yeah, I okay? preach now. And, preach. And I know all this pan-gender, <laughs> cross-gender, cis-gender, non-binary. When I was growing up, you was a boy or a girl, and you picked one. Yeah. Regardless of what was between your legs, you picked one. So what you said you is again? So pan, so pan gender. So I think the young people, they, so it was the youngster that that introduced me to that Hold term. On, Cause you wearing me out already. Oh. I <laughs> did. When I they, was in the gay bars, you okay. was either gay or you were straight. It was just they, that they, simple. They, they, they don't want these old labels. You know that's old, old school. Labels. I so when you it. think about the character though of Punky Daniva, which is I think part of what you're talking about, yeah, right? I'm and that it gives you freedom. Is that a way for you to express a different side of you from a gender perspective, or is that business, is that character? So for me, great question. It has absolutely nothing to do with gender. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm fearless in that area. It has more to do with political correctness and acceptability, mm-hmm. and maybe even respectability politics. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you one better that a lot of people don't know. For a lot of years, that wig was a shield. Mm. All right now. Because when I was in character, and then you, you, you look online as you guys are discovering, as you gain popularity with the show, and people be like, oh, you're ugly, or you're this, or you're stupid, or you're that. Mm. They were talking to that character. I heard that. So that didn't affect me. Because you're chocolate and beautiful. It did, thank you. Thank you, love. Mm-hmm. It didn't affect me at all. You, you, you're, you're talking to, as far as I was concerned, Funky Dineva was an inanimate object. You, you, you're the stupid. You're talking to a vase. Mm. Mm. But then, you know, it, it was a shield for me. When I got to the point where I was comfortable enough to take the wig off, then it was like, you're really talking to me. And the words that you're saying may or may not affect me. Mm. I took that wig off when I was comfortable enough to step out in the world and say, this is cute, and I can take on what y'all gonna say and be and do. But before then, um, Dineva was a shield that I, I needed. I heard that. Was that... Sh- that wig or that shield that you created kind of important for you to be able to express that human because now you can do it without the wig. Mm-hmm. Was that was that what you used initially to be able to do that and be that person? Not consciously. Okay. Not consciously. So all of this started out as just a, a, a big gag mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, and it was never a shield for my humor. You, you, you can go back to kindergarten and everybody will always tell you, I was the funniest kid in the class. I've always been. That's what I've been put on this earth to do, entertain people. Humor is mm. what I was designed to be here for. So it was never a shield from that. But my esteem and my confidence has not always been there to be in this public space and to take on the criticism from other people. I mean, people are harsh. Yes, they yeah. are. And we all have insecurities. Yes, we you do. You know what I'm saying? My and, fat and, stomach, and, baby. And when you, you have a world of people mm-hmm. throwing a million darts at you, 999,000 of them might not hit, but there's that one that's going to land. Do you have a message that people haven't heard from you that you want them to hear? How um, did you stand in your power? Was it a process? Did it happen overnight? So I'm going to come back to your question. Thank oh, you. Me, baby. The first part of the answer to your question is, how did I stand in my power? The first part was identifying what my power was. That was number one. So the first, I had to identify it. The number two, I had to understand what my strength was in my power. And that was my gift. I don't think I'd be half of what I was if I was straight. I heard And that, that sh- boring as f- uh, Now back to <laughs> That's not Just fair. Right. That Antonio, That's not fair. Because we, a lot of our oh audience is straight people. They're not going to, they don't appreciate that. <laughs> Okay. It may be true, but it's not appreciated. And in them, in, in them not appreciating it, they didn't die. Their lights didn't get turned off. Chris, you hear and that mouth? Still works. They, they. <laughs> I was gonna say this is right on top. They just, right? <laughs> they just don't appreciate. Right it. I mean, like, let's explore that. What's that mean? You don't appreciate it. Okay, now what? You still here? I don't know. I mean, it's it's kind of true. I I I, I also kind of think it. 
Mm, well, you must called be everybody pangender, so I, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, exactly. That's, you know, I'm so happy you said they that. They probably don't appreciate I, that. Either. No, no. I, I, think, I, I, I think I imagine they wouldn't. That is what the, where the boredom comes from. Right. The 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 restrictive uh, the restrictedness of mm. being unable to be both female and male. We are all sperm and egg. We are all that. Mm. And but most people live in a cage. If you're born with a penis, you cannot do all of these things that are associated with females and vice versa. But that's just not true. That's not nature. That's not reality. We, we should all be female and male. So here's what I want to add to that. We got to be careful. I think that's not true for you, right? And I think the same way a space has to be carved out for you to have that experience, a space has to be carved out for that masculine, heterosexual male to say, this is who I am and this is all I am. And the space has to be carved out for that heterosexual woman that says, this is who I am and this is all I am. And the space has to be carved out for that trans woman to say, this is my experience and this is all I am. And we can't be guilty and do the same things to them that they do to us, which is take our experience and blanket the whole planet. So I want to give you a little pushback on that and say we're not all pansexual. That some of us are and some of us aren't. And either way, that's okay. I agree. I agree 100%. It's the freedom well to, to be I whatever you it. are and, or want to Very be. Very well said. That's how Aaron and I got into it. When he's, and he says, well, you're going to be the bisexual character. And I was like, excuse me? I ain't sucked <laughs> in years. <laughs> you feel what I'm talking about? Well, what like, you did with it, did I mean, I, did, I had, <laughs> right? Well, what else you did I, with I'm it? I'm telling you, I had not fried a few along the way. <laughs> that's a whole other story. But I was like, I, I'm not bisexual. And that's where I've concluded, because when I went, I said before, when I finally started messing with women and, and then I met a guy, and they tell you, you gotta be crazy, you gay. Why is you playing yourself? Excuse me? You know? So not... Cheryl, I, I don't know much about your background. Oh, um, good for you. <laughs> when did you start messing with women? Is that when you went to prison, or was that before that, or after that? Uh, listen, it's you. Don't know, <laughs> you don't know much about my background. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know much. I, I, I don't know your background. Your background. But, but, I heard you been to the joint, girl. Uh, we weren't gonna tell that. You know, I mean, I'm just gonna yeah. mention that. You know what everybody think, because I went to jail when I went to prison. And pardon my Jail ignorance. and prison is two different things. You go to prison, you shackled, baby. That's what she Shackled thought down and on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> but when I got there, they made such a mockery of the lesbian world, of life. I ain't lying but about did that. did you play around in prison? It's called bull diving in, in, in the joint. And I did have some experiences while I was there. Get lonely. What you did, because you give me a check for our teas. What'd you say? You, 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 you give me... Give me a check for our teas. You, you, you no. give me real, like, no. Wells Fargo still got your name on the list. <laughs> oh. oh so clearly, oh, okay. clearly, <laughs> you is not concerned <laughs> about saying about. anything, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Chris, help me. Oh. Man, help we're going to move on, but what no, you no, was no, in no, that for? Help me. Look, you really want to know that. It was it. either that or attempted murder. Like, that, Wait. That's what it's giving me. People will kill me and say, Shrew, uh, oh. what did you go to prison for? Because now, of course, they know me as Auntie Cheryl, and I'm all. And mm -hmm. I'll be like, killing my husband, man. Especially when men ask me. And then they be like, you killed your husband? Like, nah, I ain't do that. Well, what'd oh, you cause do? bitch, I had just got real nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was about look, to turn into one of the white gays look. real quick. Oh my God, Cheryl! Like, <laughs> oh my God! Like that is so like. <laughs> Say the B word this again. This was great. Oh, and, like, wait, please you know call me. This please. food is so good. Say I don't even deserve it, again. so I'm gonna leave it here with you. <laughs> I try to go, tell oh, people, like, <laughs> it's the lowercase b and it's the uppercase b. Mm. B dot i dot t dot c dot All right. h dot. Babe but, in total control of herself. I'm a. I'm Hold only, on, you spin too fast. See, that's some shit you don't learn in prison. Nice. <laughs> but you, you taking me too fast, mama, and you doing that fast used <laughs> car salesman talk. Look, that's from Ghetto Street. The, the question Cleveland. was, what you was in there for? Oh, oh y'all want to go back to that? I just want to know. Okay. I'm just gonna know you like do, you didn't know me. Anybody know at the table? My family know. Family. That is a great know. question. Everybody's no. all. Now, how y'all been sitting I've up here with this? Y'all got a whole fella up here, and y'all pocketbook sitting right there. Hey, y'all don't even know what this Somebody is. Somebody better preach. <laughs> what you say, fucking guy? Uh, have you checked for your credit cards no, lately? Where's my bag at? Where is your bag? My bag is in the bag. <laughs> no, well, no. no, where is your bag? What the, have you checked? I hope your ass ain't got it. All I got to say is, I am reformed. Uh, 
I am reformed. <laughs> I am a role model now. If you don't go to the joint, whatever you do, youngsters. And, and, I, and I think her prerogative is to not disclose that. All and right. I think as we talk about the topic today even, it is about what we say and the impact of what we say. You're right. And she, it, it may not be important the, why she went there. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes, you know, we can be curious about something. But I always say, just because, just because somebody asks you a question, you're not you obligated to answer. to answer it. Mm -hmm. Right. Do, and then we can all say it ain't none of your damn business. You're right. And that was a very, <laughs> that was a very, that was a very, that was a very classy based answer. And I respect you a lot for standing in the gap for Cheryl. Oh. Cheryl, what did you go to prison for? <laughs> now, Cheryl, I will also say, <laughs> you have a lovely quote. No, 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 baby. That says, <laughs> I am not the person I was before. Oh, I always tell a bitch, don't judge me for my past because I don't live there no more. Oh. You know what? Invite Cheryl on to uh, DGIF. Yeah, yeah. oh. Great. And she'll tell y'all what she went to prison there for. You go. How about that? And you can and then you can find out how your past affects your future because your past affected your future as well, didn't now, it? Now you was on our show and they had to do all that. Well, come on. <laughs> Put me on you can come on our show. You ain't got to do all that, and we ain't waiting on all that. Okay. I would like to come on your fabulous show. Yes. Great Sit answer. with you all and let y'all pick me apart mm -hmm. on my criminal past. Okay. Zip, you know. Chris, come help me. Well, well, you come help. Be be before you ask that, Chris, we're going to go to break. Okay. We're going to come back, oh, keep enjoying it. this food, and continue the conversation. Love it. Yes. And Funky Don even got me playing Drake's song. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it just me early? <laughs> Damn fool. Welcome to the house. Young in good company. So cute. I know with your quick wit, <laughs> and banter that cancel culture that has become so uh, aggressive towards comedians. How has that been for you? As it relates to me, I don't believe in cancel culture. I don't give in to cancel culture. I think cancel culture has absolutely gone too far. I think <laughs> that as, as a society, we have become way too sensitive and we have overcorrected everything. Mm. We've overcorrected everything, and in giving few people a voice for their grievance, we've now given everybody a voice for a grievance, every little grievance. Oh my God, the cup was pink at Starbucks, <laughs> and I'm non-gender binary. <laughs> Cancel the whole Starbucks! <laughs> True. And it's like, so girl, well, do you, it's now you cup. said that, do you feel that it is more aggressive or permeates more in the LGBTQIA plus experience? Most definitely, but I understand okay. it. Okay, what, what, what do, do you, you mean understand by that? About? So, so, so let me give you the first part. Yeah. And I'm gonna catch a lot of heat for this, but I'm gonna say it. Okay. We in the LGBTQ plus community have gained a little bit of footing and we've gotten a little crazy. I think many of us just want accommodations where accommodations don't need to be made in many instances, or we don't choose our battles wisely, and we choose the most trivial battles to lean our resources towards, and then the greater world, especially people who don't want to validate our experiences, they want to pick apart the trivial things because you guys have, we as a community have decided to make case in point bathrooms mm. the leading issue. One of my, one of my greatest friends, T.S. Madison, Mm. said to me, trans woman, she said, Q, where the hell y'all think I've been going to the bathroom all this time? Like, it's not even an issue, bitch. I walk in Target with all these titties and all this ass. Where do you think I was going to the bathroom at? But all of a sudden, this tiny. bathroom, and I'm just using that as one point. tiny example, we use that as the the, 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 the driving point that we're gonna make our mark on the world, and it was a non, it, it truly was a non-issue. It was a non-issue for you. It is a big issue for a lot of other people. It was a non-issue for more, and I'm gonna be very honest with you. Sometimes you have to sacrifice the few for the many, okay? Everybody's not gonna get their way, and you can't customize the world to every individual desire of everybody at this table. Sometimes you have to stand down for the and greater good. that's what good. they said about the civil rights movement, just uh -uh. stand down. 
everything is not a movement. I'm speaking Agreed to the disagree. point of I overcorrection. That. I think in some areas we have overcorrected and it's going to make it harder for us to get strides when we overcorrect on things like this lady saying, I am a woman at a gender neutral event. It, it matters if it's gender neutral or not. She identifies as a woman. We want people to respect us for our gender identity. Then we have to respect other people for theirs. But again, of the things that are really troubling our community, pay inequity, housing discrimination, getting kicked out of our homes. We led with bathrooms. I hear you. Uh, they can all happen. We can, we can all incorporate all of these struggles. And it's not about telling someone you're, you're asking for too much. Just listen. What is it that you're fighting for? Hey, join our fight. We're fighting for housing and equality, and let's fight together. I think that when you have a group of people who are already hesitant and giving you a bunch of pushback, that you have to appeal to them emotionally and that you have to start in a space that they can understand and recognize. And I think that, I think that there is a hierarchy of needs. And as far as the LGBTQ plus and trans community is concerned, and I stand 10 toes down on this, bathrooms wasn't at the top of the list. For you, preach. of course. I definitely want to speak to the bathroom issue because there are individuals who uh, may um, appear a certain way and then make a, a certain bathroom choice where then they want to feel comfortable and safe once they enter into the restroom. And so the idea of kind of opening that up and broadening that scope uh, allows them to now feel safe. And so that now if men have access to the same restroom, so that if she's in there alone, what about her safety? What about if, that? If a, if a man is going to, to violate a person, they're going to go into a woman's bathroom and do that. But, but, well, uh, you think that the, the sign on the door is going to keep a, a criminal, I well, don't like the word, violator, well, I don't, out of the door? And here's the point I want to make. Then it's the same thing that you're saying. Here's, here's the point I want to make. You see how we splitting hairs and folks ain't even got no place to stay? <laughs> That's the point I'm making. This mm -hmm. argument that y'all two are even having mm -hmm. proves my very point. Folks ain't got no job. Folks ain't got no place to stay. Yeah, Folks can't minutes. even eat. And we're around here worrying about a minute and 45 second encounter in Target. But we don't need to minimize people's experience. That might be very important. It's not about minimizing, somewhere. it's about prioritizing. And, 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 I, and, and you can't, you, you will never be able to convince me that there is a human alive who will prioritize that minute and 45 seconds in the bathroom over housing, food, and shelter. But for a person that has housing and has shelter and has a job... Then take but... your ass home and use the bathroom. I was gonna oh. say outside! <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, no, no! <laughs> over a bathroom I or not, you. bitch. So is that because... I told them hoes to go home and use the bathroom and you can't cancel me. Right. Right. Can, I, can, I, can I ask a question? You uh, because uh, you mentioned God several times and in my mind I wanted to know how religious are you? Not very at all. I don't believe in organized religion. Um, I very much believe that there are multiple paths to the same place. In my opinion, it's all the same. The it's just a different route. Us. It's just a different route. You took I-95, I took the turnpike. You know what I'm saying? But it is all one and the same, and I like to think of myself as um, more spiritual. So, Q, you have been uh, a bit of a, a social media monster. You've actually been able to grow and build your brand. How has social media been an asset to you? So, social media has changed my life. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but I was a corporate accountant for 14 years prior to entering the entertainment space. I used to drive to work every day wanting to slit my wrist. Mm -hmm. I was miserable. And quite frankly, being an accountant, I made at that time more money than most of my friends did around me. So you get caught in that trap. The lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? I've got this lifestyle, you know, I, I can't leave this so you, you feel trapped. Um, the best thing that ever happened to me is my boss fired me. Thank you, John. He fired me. John, we love you. He fired me. And um, it was because I was underperforming. I, I got sick. For, I got sick. Toxicity, baby. You know what? I'm lying. <laughs> you, you didn't get sick? I told the people I got sick. Okay. And it just, you know what? And you know what? This, this, this is a first. Oh, you Because this her. story has always been concocted, and you I've always told people honesty. I got sick. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's honestly not the truth. See, Did you hear that, John? That's what happens. That's not the truth. Oh. The truth is, I got booked in Chicago to do a party. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I took it. off of work for three days wow. to go do this booking where it cost me more to get dressed for the booking than I made. I think I might even charge people 
$300 to book me. This is my very first booking. And so I was off for work Monday through Wednesday. Get back in town Thursday. I call my boss and I say, listen, I'm sick. I've been out for four days. I might as well just stay out through Friday and start cleaning on Monday. And he said to me, he said, you know what? You've been out this long. It creates a nice natural stopping point. Oh. I can tell that you're not happy. Aww. And basically, don't worry about coming back. John. And um, I rolled, I looked at the phone, I just hung it up. I ain't had nothing to say. <laughs> I just hung it up. Because, bitch, I'm a corporate accountant. I could tell my boss to kiss my ass on Monday and have another one by Wednesday. Yeah, accountant, baby. Because you're everybody smart. can't do it. It's a, it's no, a niche that's skill a set. Serious. And um, I said to myself, I said, you already living paycheck to paycheck because I was spending every dime I had to try to make myself happy. A lot of people. You broke. I hear you. you ain't got no job. Mm. What better point to start over? I said, because to send out your resume would literally be the equivalent of saying, hi, sir, can you please pay me to be miserable? Mm. Mm -hmm. So what I chose to do was my car got repo. I eventually got evicted. I hear you. And I went and laid on my uh, best friend and fraternity brother's floor for 10 months. And... Within five of those months, I was uh, did the first Love and Hip Hop reunion on VH1. Within five months of me saying, I'm not doing this, I'm going to try this, because at the time, the Obama administration was giving unemployment for two years. So unemployment was roughly $1,500. And I said to myself, I owe it to myself. If I can make these videos make another $1,500, that's $3,000 a month. Negro, you can figure out a way to live off of them 3,000. Q. And that's what I did. So we come back from the break. Let's break. pick up from that yes. point. Gotcha. That's the turning point right there, right? Gotcha. I want to yes. hear more about that. Wow. Whoa. That was awesome. Loving it. Yeah. Yes. Welcome to the house. You're in good company. So Q, before we went to break, you were talking about you were at this point in your life where you were making some decisions. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go on and continue to tell us what was going on? So, you know, uh, um, I was doing the accounting. I, I hated it. I used to throw parties on the side to, to subsidize my creative side. So I had this huge following on Facebook, and I used to essentially journal in my Facebook status messages. And I just was playing around on YouTube one day. That was the year that The Real Housewives of Atlanta came out. So that October for Halloween, me and my friends went out as the housewives. And for Halloween, I played the Nene character. You got some more, girl? Fill me up, okay, child. Okay. Just, just, just fill me up, honey. Okay. Yes, to the top. I'll tell oh, you when to stop. All right. Mm -hmm. so, like that. Right there. Yeah. Just be nothing. No so more. that far, like I was saying, I was the Nene character. Thank you, baby. And, um, Fast forward to Christmas, I find this wig in the basement, clean it up, put it on, take a break, take my phone. I'm like, yes, honey, my hair is lay, bitch. I'm just playing around. I thought the video was funny, but it was too big to text. Mm. So I sent it to a friend. I uploaded it to my YouTube channel and sent him the link. Oh my God. And he decided to post it and encouraged me to post it, and then it went viral. Mm. And that is how Funky Dineva was created. So I started doing the video just as a journal. Because again, I could say things in that wig that the corporate accountant Q could not say. Mm -hmm. So I was like, bitch, this, this, this is a release. I, like, it was oh. therapy for me. YouTube started sending me these emails about partnership and I ignored them, ignored them, ignored them. And then one day at work, not performing, doing everything else except my work, I fill out the little form or whatever. And like in the first month, I made like $30. Like the second month, I made like $120 and then I get fired. You see what I'm saying? So I was like, okay, I don't made 120. Uh, if I can get these videos to make 15, and my 15 from unemployment, that's three grand. Here we go. And like I said, within six months of that decision, I was on TV. Aw, uh, what a story. So one of my biggest accomplishments is I ain't worked for a bitch since I was 27 years old. <laughs> <laughs> you said you and I'm 38. Wow. So, yeah. so for you, when you made the decision to step into your power, when you made the decision to be happy, mm -hmm. it, so it sounds like, right? Mm -hmm. So that sounds like that it came first to be happy. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And, I, and if I heard correctly, you found your power in that process. Indeed. Um, so what's interesting, I always kind of talk about how the universe conspires to support you. Mm -hmm. And I think particularly when you make that decision that you are going to step into being happy mm -hmm. and being yourself, mm -hmm. things line up. And so when I hear you finding the wig, like, like those kind of journey, um, journey stories, 
happen to people all the time, but it starts with that first decision. What people don't understand is, you are of no earthly good if you're not whole. And in order to be whole, you gotta be happy. Yep. I have one rule, like if we're, if we're dating or we go out on a date, I always ask somebody, um, do you like what you do for a living? Are you, are you happy? And if they say no, the date is literally over. Check. There's no way, there's no way you can be out of the house 10, 12 hours and be unhappy and then walk through the door and magically be happy. No. That, that math ain't math then. No. So for me, the number one rule before looks, credit, mm. top, bottom, verse, and all of that is, are you happy with what you do for a living? Uh -huh. And if the answer is no, we cannot grow from there. Mm. Wow. So I, I, I'm asking this Ooh. only because uh, there's someone else who also has a similar yeah. struggle, and you've been public about mm -hmm. substance use, drug use. Most definitely. Use. The cocaine was my drug of choice. OK. I hear you. And, and about overcoming, you're talking about finding happiness. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure becoming sober or overcoming that was a part of the process of becoming happy, or was it not? Um. You know what, they were two different races ran at two different times. Gotcha. And for, for me, they didn't have anything to do with one another. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of people's experiences, oh, I was traumatized, or I went through this, and it led me to that. That honestly was not my experience. My experience was I was hanging out with the girls in the club for years, and the girls kept trying to get me to go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. and I gave, I, for years I didn't go, and then one time I went, and I liked what was in the bathroom, so I kept going. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, I had my Lindsay Lohan moment in my 20s and in my early 30s, and then you wake up when, you know what I'm saying? You, you, but because for me, my abuse of cocaine and alcohol was not linked to trauma or whatever, it literally was partying for me. Mm -hmm. And then I grew the f up. Youngsters, do y'all hear Then, you know, that? I, I just, I, for me, I didn't have to go to rehab or therapy. It was just simply one of those, this don't got old. Like, how many days you gonna wake up at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and don't miss everything because you've been up to 8 in the morning, feet in your nose, and drinking brown liquor? You know what I'm saying? And so you just, you, for me, and I don't want to trivialize anybody else's experience because I understand sure. it's real, but for me, it was just a matter of looking myself in the face and saying, you wasn't raised like this. Mm. And your purpose on this earth is bigger than this. And, and I don't look down on, oh, listen, Drugs and alcohol are cool just as long as they're done in moderation and in a party setting. And that is my honest belief. You know what I'm saying? But everybody can't handle that. Exactly. Everybody can't handle that. that. That's a good point right there. Everybody can't handle that. I would be scared to death. I, I won't even, I, and cannabis, everybody's, that, that was grown. I would be scared to death to trust myself. Yeah. Mm. I everybody. cannot trust it's myself. And it's a the slope. only thing I can do is stay away. Yeah. And that's it. And, and if I could get my 20s back, I would have stayed away then too. Mm. I detest any substance that, that takes you off the rails. Understood. It, it killed my son. Mm. And it killed most of my life. If Thank you can you heal that, yeah. from, from killing your body, do it. I mean, that's from the depths of my heart. Appreciate that, Cheryl. Really? Thanks for being so, so vulnerable and transparent. Yep. And I that. appreciate you for saying, hey, you just cold turkey and said enough. Yep. That's that's powerful. I had to go. I had to go away. Feel me? So good for you. So you can look into this world right now and say you ain't gotta just self destruct. Yep. You can stop. Yep. Yeah. Right and on. With, uh, let, let's take a break. Yep. And we come back. Good for uh, you. We'll pick up the conversation. Thank you. Right on. You're in good company. So. Now that the social media game got you into this gray space, and then, oh, well. There you go. Oh, what is this? Y'all Thank you. Apple galette and whiskey glaze. These French pastries come with a kick, stuffed with apples and finished with whiskey. If you don't like the pastries, you're sure to love the whiskey glaze. Apple galette. It's a little, it's a little lighter than an apple pie. Uh, you got a whiskey-infused applesauce and a whiskey-infused blaze. Stop talking, blaze. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> Sauce is abuse, what you say? <laughs> yeah, you talked about, you know, that, that idea of being in this gray space. That, is that a mm. life that you're kind of wanting to have in solitude? Or do, would you like a, a, a maid or partner? Or you know what, like that's that? a good question. Um, and and the, the honest answer to that is, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I, I will say this. I never dreamed in that color, 
When I was coming up, there were no examples of gay relationship. There, were, there was no example of, of, of love. It took me graduating college to realize that my neighbors, that my dad and my stepmom told us were sisters all our lives, were actually a lesbian couple. Um, and the problem is, I am now 38. My last relationship was at 27 years old. So anybody who steps into my life right now, you're battling my peace and my solitude. Mm -hmm. Your presence has to feel better than my solitude. Ooh. And I have built um, unapologetically and a bit braggadociously, I have built a f amazing life. Ooh. So for you to now walk through the door and feel better than what I've built, that's going to be very challenging. Um, I think with what my calling on this planet is, my mission is bigger than relationship. Me, Say that again. Me personally, I think with mm -hmm. what my calling is on this here earth, mm -hmm. my mission is bigger than relationship. So let me ask a question about that. So you say bigger than relationship. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? How are you so defining relationship? A lot of people hold getting coupled off as the end all be all. Like once I get a man or once I get a woman and I have 2.5 kids, a picket fence and a dog named Fido, my life is complete. Got it. Um, my mission here is bigger than that. So do you have relations? I f go. Preach. Okay. I got three on rotation that have been there for four years. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So nice. I'm f***ing the same three people. So let's, okay. let's explore that a little okay. bit. Because I know that, you know, oftentimes the community is seen through a sexual lens. Okay. And so when I just heard what you said, I thought about it from the context of, are these individuals, because the statement prior was that your life was bigger than relations. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, are these individuals just objects? Like, how do they fit into They're a safe world? place to scratch an itch. Mm. Mm. And, they're, and they're aware yeah, of their role. Most so everybody listen, understands. Listen, listen. Do they know about each other? That's none of their business. Oh, okay. okay. That's none of their business because okay. what, what we do in the hour, two, three that we're entangled, that's our business. And anything okay. outside of that is, is not your business. Um, they so would, you got rules, don't they, even ask they, No, but they're, they're, they're not even rules because rules implies that it's been discussed. Oh. This is what we're here to do. Ah. This is what we're doing. This is what our relationship for the last four years has been predicated upon. So there's no other discussion for us to, to have. Ah. And at the moment in which you think that there is a greater discussion, then this is over. Because that's ah. where I'm at. And what a lot of people don't understand is it, you really don't matter. It's about what I want. I, I curate the energy in my space. And either you mm. choose to be a willing character in my play or you don't. And either way, I'm okay with that. You know what I'm saying? But you got to understand in this stratosphere, I'm the director and you're just a character in this play. Do you Would think you that's cold? Do I think it's cold? I don't. I think it is straightforward. I think it's adult. I think it is honest. And I think that for people who operate on the same, same wavelength, it's what they need to exist. I don't do ambiguity. I don't do gray areas. I don't do intuition. I do direct communication. Preach. Preach. We f***ing or not. I feel you. Well, yes. you know what, what seems to not <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew you'd see things my way. Uh, what you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, now that's four. Okay. Yes. Yes. The power of persuasion. Oh, I'm just joking. That group. That was I, the I, I really, I really relate to what you're saying. I, I see a lot of people where, with a relationship being their ultimate goal. It's not mine. And, and I, you know, I've also been single for probably, I think, 12, maybe just 15 years. I don't even, I stopped counting. And I had no desire for a relationship. Obviously, I have sexual needs. I get those needs met. But the, the, the coupling, maybe it's just not for everyone. And if I had to dig a little deeper, I would honestly say, um, I've never seen an example in my real present life of healthy, fruitful relationships. Mm. You said um, that right away. So my mom's side of the family, I call it a curse. They all fall in love and have kids in their early 20s. Never remarry or date again. My parents divorced when I was a couple months old. I've never seen my mother in any type of romantic entanglement with another man. My father and my stepmother have a relationship I would never want. Yeah, well. Every friend I have sits in the car 45 minutes before they go in the house talking to me, talking about how they could get rid of this <laughs> So with that being said, I in my life have not seen the benefit of it. Mm. I think one of the things that makes it uniquely all right for me to not be in a romantic relationship is that I have the most healthy, 
social life that any person could ever ask for. Like, I have the greatest friends on the planet, and they fill up my intimacy cup. Like, I am intimate partners with about five or six yeah. really close friends. I can be honestly say, I don't have those traumatic friendship stories that people have. Oh, this person stole from me. This person slept with my man. This person betrayed me. I have been spared all of that. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And the only thing that I don't get from my friends is the easiest thing that you're able to pick up in any bar, any town, USA. And that's sex. You know what I always say. I always say they will f you, but they won't feed you. <laughs> you feel what I'm yep. saying? Where is that line of demarcation where you become a gold digger? No, and I, I, I completely concur with that. Mm -hmm. I completely concur with that. I agree. I think because I, mean, when we I, slap I feel like all, re all relationships do not have to embody intimacy. Mm -hmm. and it can just yes, be yes. to satisfy. A certain need. What's interesting, his friendships are intimate. They are. So I think right. that the are. difference is usually relationships do have intimacy, and I think that what he's describing are not relationships. And I think you know what? I oh, think, I see what you're saying. I, think I don't so think that they're So that then that way they. I get it. They fulfill I get that. a need. They do. I they do. I get that. They I fulfill think, a need. What I'm I do. I think I where actually do. a lot of people go out and they look for their end all, be all in one person. I have had to put six people together to get it, but the mm. the, the, the the all that matters is I got it. Yes. My heart cup is filled. That's what's awesome. Whether it's 20% yeah. from you, 20% from you, 40 from you, and 30 yes. from you, at the end of the day, it's filled, and that's all that matters. I'm whole. You need more than one pair of shoes. Agree? You know? And so I, on and, and that? I just love that. He's whole. We only need yeah. one pair of shoes. You need more, you need more, more than one. Pair. Like, you, need you need more than one. Oh, you need oh, more yeah. than one pair of shoes. Well, at least three. At least three. <laughs> and with that, we're going to have to have you back, Q. Yeah. This has been rich. Yes. And there's something we love to let all of our guests know is once you come to the house, you're what? Family. Family. Thank you. 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 Oh, you brought out the best you were, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.